This is how a fixed period system works. If we show the inventory level on y-axis and time on x-axis, orders happen on a specific time interval. So let's say if t0 is here, the next time that you can put your order is a fixed distance from t0. Basically, the agreement between you and your supplier is that you cannot put orders except in intervals of t, um, let's say every month or every 15 days. So the second time that you can put your order is at t1, and the next one will be at t2. However, we don't have a fixed quantity that you have to order. The supplier accepts you to order any amount that you wish, um, but the time of the order should be in a specific time interval. So again, between these two orders, the time is t. Your goal is to set your in inventory level to a specific level that we call it optimal replenishment level or the, the maximum inventory in this system. Let's call it M. So your goal would be when you put a, an order is to bring your inventory level to uh, that level M. Now let's assume that at T0 you are at level M and uh, you have a fixed demand in an ideal world so your inventory level will go down so let's assume that the demand is demand per day is let's say 20 units per day and in an ideal world it is a constant so if to, ha to have a system that is working well and doesn't cause cost of lost opportunity by the time that the next order arrives you still should have some inventory so let's say if the lead time if the lead time is L let's assume that is two days you want your inventory level to reach to zero when you put your order at T1 and you must have extra inventory to last until that order that you put at T1 to arrive so the way that your inventory sh goes down with a rate of 20 it should last these many days and you put your orders at these points and then order arrives at after the lead time and in an ideal world which you don't have safety stock you don't need to have safety stock your inventory level will go down like that if you live in a non-ideal world, then this happens. Again, this is inventory level, this is time, so this is inventory position and time at T0 and you are at maximum and this is T0. The next time that you can order is at T1 with the interval of T. Uh, so you, you have to put your order at T1 and then the order arrives at this time. But what happens is that you know during the first day the demand is faster than expected 
on the second day that slows down on the third day demand goes faster and on the fourth day it slows down on the fifth day the demand goes faster and on the next day it goes slower and then it goes faster so basically the demand varies and it's not as we assumed um, so there is variations uh, for example in this period of time the demand is slower than uh, average and during this period of time the demand is faster than average and it happened that uh, you know our expectation that this maximum quantity that we have will last for t plus l l is the lead time doesn't come true if the world was working in an ideal way the demand would be constant and your consumption of the inventory would be like this but because of the variations that we uh, cannot control the demand is changing so the demand on the first demand and the rate of demand in the second period and the rate of demand in the third and fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh day they they change and overall the demand over the period was uh, faster than expected therefore here we have this stock out it was cost of loss opportunity which is something we don't want now to fix this problem we have to increase our M which is the maximum uh, in inventory level to a higher amount such that it we are sure let's say we are 90 percent sure we want to be 90 percent sure that uh, that the inventory will definitely last uh, for the duration between orders and the lead time we want to set our replenishment level or M to a level that is higher so this is M plus safety and this would be the safety stock such that when the demand applies to this level uh, considering the expected variations that might happen we want it to be to be such that it will last for the duration and it will not end by that time so how much should we increase uh, how much we have to add to the maximum replenishment level uh, is the question for the safety stock now the amount that we consider for the safety depends on the level of confidence that we want to have if we want to be 90 percent confidence then we have to add a lot of safety stock if you want to be 70 percent confident that the stock out doesn't happen then we can add a little less safety stock but the safety stock uh, um, the amount of safety stock is related to the how much variation we are expecting or it depends on the variance that we are sensitive to but what is the variance we are sensitive to we are sensitive into variations of demand during this whole time t plus l because during all this time we cannot put any order except at this point of time Every, everything is predetermined so if demand starts to go faster even on the first period of time or second period of time during the interval or during the lead time uh, we are susceptible to that we cannot change our uh, basically time of order so we are susceptible to the variations during all of these times so this is the the variation that we are susceptible to we have to look at the variance during t all the time plus the time during the 
time interval, that constant, and also during the lead time. Okay, so we are susceptible to variations during the first period of time and the variance of the second period of time up to the variance uh, the last uh, unit of time during the T and also the first day the variations during the first day of the lead time plus the second day of the lead time and all of the days of lead time but if we assume that the variations of the demand is a constant let's say we call the we call the variations of each unit of time as sigma of t let's assume that this is a constant the variance no the variance doesn't change okay so if the variance doesn't change then the variance during this whole time would be the same and we will have t variance plus l variance per unit of time t plus l multiplied by variance of over a unit of time to the power of 2 that means that the standard deviation during this period that we are waiting is square root of d plus l multiplied by standard deviation during a unit of time. So if you are hired in an institution and uh, you are asked to design a fixed period inventory system, the first thing you will ask them is that, tell me what has been the, uh, the demands in the past period of time, because to, f to think about the safety stock, you have to uh, think of how much the demand can vary. So this is the time period and this is the demand that has been observed in the past month. So one, two, three, four, and you get as much data as you can. And let's say the demand has been 40 units and has been 39 and 41 and 42 and 38 and so forth average demand in the past has been 40 this is the average demand or you can call it mu average demand and then you type it in your calculator and you discover that the variance is 4 standard deviation per unit of time is 2 we have to first decide how much should be the maximum replenishment level. Okay, so the maximum replenishment level without safety stock must last T plus L days multiplied by demand per unit of time. That means that if the time interval is five days and the lead time is two, demand per day is 40 therefore the maximum replenishment level that will last all of these days is 280 units but we don't live in a in an ideal world so in a non-ideal world we are interested in the variations of the demand during the whole lead time so the variance during t plus l would be square root of 5 plus 2 multiplied by this which is the standard deviation that we calculate based on the past observation and that would be 2 square root of 7 now safety stock depends on how much confidence we want to have or what is the service level that we want to have so let's think about this the completion if the completion follows a normal distribution 
if the expected demand during the time interval plus the lead time is 280 and the standard deviation during T plus L is to a square root of 7 if we plan our inventory system based on 280 there is 50% chance that the demand will be less than the expected amount there is also 50% chance that demand will be more than the expected amount so this is not a good idea to set your M at this level this is the distribution of demand during T plus L we want to set our M at a level let's say that uh, we are 90% confident that we will not run out of stock meaning that at the time by the time that the next order arrives the total consumption or the to total demand will be less than this level okay so this is the target level that we want this uh, things less than this amount should have a chance of 90% so this area should be 90% now if we go to normal distribution table we will see that the Z or the number of standard deviations that we have to go to the right of the mean to guarantee that 90% of events happen less than that time uh, we will see that we don't have exactly 0.9 in the table but it is between 1.28 and 1.29 and if we want to be safe that we will guarantee a 90% confidence it is better to use 1.29 so if we go to z equal to 1.29 that guarantees that the events that can happen considering the variations we have observed have 90% chance of happening uh, to be less than that so the point of interest in fact is 280 plus 1.29 standard deviations which is 2 square root of 7 and this is the safety stock that we have to have and our maximum replenishment level in this case will be T plus L multiplied by D plus Z uh, standard deviation of TL or you can say it is T plus L multiplied by D which is without M without safety plus Z and this is square root of T plus L multiplied by standard deviation of one unit of time so again to repeat what we found above here we have 5 plus 2 multiplied by D plus 1.29 square root of 5 plus 2 and standard deviation per unit of time that gives us 280 plus 1.29 Okay, we say equal to 1.29 multiplied by square root of 7 multiplied by 2 that is 6.8206 6 6.8206 so this is safety stock that will guarantee for 
90% confidence. And the total would be 286.8206. But can we ask our inventory manager to to order, you know, to replenish the the amount of inventory every time that it he or she orders to 286.82? No. Can we make it less than this? No, because we want to guarantee 90% confidence. Therefore, we will set the M to be at 287. Notice that we rounded up here. We rounded up there. Uh, because we want to guarantee 90% confidence. It's not because of this 0.8 that we round up. Uh, even if it was 286.2, we would round it up because we want to guarantee 90% confidence and round down can or simple rounding may cause uh, less than the level of confidence that we are guaranteeing.